Today we celebrate our holy patron, St. Herman of Alaska, who is not only the patron of this parish, but is the patron saint for all of America, for all of Orthodox America. Because he is, uh, he and his work, his life, his prayers are the foundation of Orthodoxy in America. St. Herman came over as a missionary. He and a whole group of <clears throat> other monks from Valon in 1793 set out and arrived a year later after trekking across Siberia, um, carrying everything that they would need uh, to establish the church in, here in America. Trekking all the way across, sometimes on foot, sometimes on, on a raft, sometimes on a boat, sometimes by ox cart, to bring the gospel to the American people. Now, those people at the time spoke Aleut and Yupik and um, Tlingit and Athabascan. And so uh, it's not what we often think of as American people, but they're as American as we are, maybe more so. And what and they established and he established <coughs> with the other missionaries the Orthodox Church in Alaska, and the, and Orthodoxy spread from Alaska down to California, and then east from California. The gospels the the gospel reading today about uh, is the Luke Beatitudes. And the epistle reading is about how we need to prefer others before ourselves. This is really the work of, of the missionary, and St. Herman is, is your ultimate missionary. Now, St. Herman was not a priest. He wasn't a bishop. He wasn't a, he wasn't a deacon. He was, he was a monk, but, he was, uh, but so far as ordination goes, he was a layman. In other words, he showed what it means to be a missionary as a lay person. And it, because it's to, uh, it's to all, all, of, all of the laity of the church, to all of us, that Christ gave the word that we would do greater, the same and greater miracles than he did. And St. Herman not only did miracles, he did, he did, and that, and those were remarkable and worth reading about. But probably the greatest miracle is his perseverance over the course of over 40 years, living in the wilderness uh, as a hermit uh, and ministering to the local people, to the native people. And in ministering to them, he gave himself entirely to them. He, he gave up his own, um, mona his, his own monastic discipline to, uh, to serve them. He, he ministered to those who were sick and dying because there were many because of the pandemics that came with every, um, every Western ship, every American and European ship which would kill up to a third or a half of the village. He took in the children, he created orphanages, he fed and educated the children, and he did everything that he could to serve these people. St. Herman sets the image of what we are called to, to be missionaries. It's not just the clergy who are the missionaries. In fact, the clergy have other responsibilities. but it's you <clears throat> to go out to proclaim the gospel of the kingdom, to go to, uh, to visit the sick, to visit those who are, uh, who are in, in mourning and who are, and who are in, uh, in grief, to visit and, and to heal those who are ill. 
God has given this not just to the clergy, but, but to each one of us. If we persevere in prayer and in fasting and in, um, and in, and in doing the works of God, God will use you. God will use you to bring about healing and consolation and reconciliation to the people, to everyone that we encounter. Because that good news of the kingdom, which is the very essence of, of what the missionary is about, he not, only, <clears throat> not only is to know and to preach and to study uh, the word of God and, and, to, and, to, uh, and to make it and to teach it, but to proclaim the, proclaim the kingdom of God by your life. Because your example is far more powerful than any words. And what is the essence of that? To love everyone who comes to you. To not hate anyone. To cast out hatred and anger and bitterness and all of these, all of these things that... Um, that uh, corrupt our relationships with other people and which are cancers in our own hearts. We have to cast out the fear. We have to cast out the, uh, the anger. We have, to, we have to renounce judgment so that, we can, so that we can serve others with an open heart in a spirit of love and kindness. And if we do this, the grace of God will act through us and bring about those same kinds of, of miracles, of, of, of healing, of consolation, and who knows what else. As the Lord said, we will do the, do the same kinds of things that he did and greater. So this is a challenge to us. How do we be, how, how do we carry out being a missionary for Christ in whatever context we find ourselves, whether we're in school, whether, whether we're in, um, in the workplace, whether we're in um, just <coughs> shopping somewhere in public, wherever we have contact with other people. And that doesn't mean that you have to, uh, uh, you know, be buttonholing everybody and saying, brother, are you saved, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> We don't do it quite that way. But we show kindness, we show mercy, we show compassion, we show love. And so much of our task is to rise above the tumult of this world. To rise above all of the squabbling, all of the political arguments, all of the um, all of the hatred and barbs that are being thrown back and forth, just to rise above that and not get involved with it and not even think about it. But how do, how do we reach out and, and touch the lives of people who are struggling and suffering? And when we can bring them the consolation of Christ, then we're doing the work of God. So brothers and sisters, God bless you to do the work of God as this is a common mission that we all share and a common, and a common uh, obedience to our Lord Jesus Christ so that, so that fulfilling that obedience, <coughs> we may be found to be trustworthy servants.